All right, Amos, all right. Keep your shirt on. Only the kid can cover it without me. Oh, you think so, do you? When I want you to tell me how to bring up my son, I'll ask you. Hey, Don. How's Bob doing? Yeah? He's got plenty of time ahead of him for that. That's all, Phelan. And remember, this isn't a baby show. I want you to bring back airplanes. But you don't get the human slant, Amos. How many people in this country have got airplanes? Just a handful. But do you know how many people have got babies? Now that... Just the father instinct. Well, I suppose you get like that after a while. Playing nursemaid to young Stark. Hey, lay off that. Uh, 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 when you call me that, smile. Winkler, do you know how many people in this country have got babies? Well, if Don Phelan's missed any, it's a surprise to me. But you don't get the human slant, Winkler. It's stuff like Phelan brings in that makes our product different. Why don't you tell him that? And make that guy think he's good? Nothing doing. You know, you ought to be the kid's old man instead of an old walrus like Stark. And when you say that smile, why, what's wrong with the old man? Oh, nothing. Yeah, that goes for his kid, too. Yeah, well, he's sure been wasting a lot of good daylight over at Canary Cottage. Listen. There once lived a wonderful woman. Oh, a marvelous woman was she. She cooked like an angel, made all her own clothes. At four every morning, Miss Harrigan rose. She played the piano and cello. And she scrubbed up the kitchen each day. She sang like a dove, and she wasn't above. Taking in refined washing, they say. She was my husband's first wife. My husband's first wife. She never was cranky. She jumped when you'd call, and the house ran on nothing at all. <laughs> so he tells me, my husband's first wife, my husband's first wife. She hated the movie. They gave her no thrill. She never went out, and she never was ill. And oh, how I wish that the dear girl were still my husband's first wife. <laughs> What do you mean, an encore? What do you think this is, a common theater? This is a high-class dump. <laughs> <laughs> Set them up, by. Well, at least you know when you've had enough. And you could learn a little lesson from that canary. And it wouldn't be singing. Better lay off, Stark. Uh-uh, Papa Donald's bank. Ah, oh, let them laugh. Think it's a joke, don't you? I'm just Don Stooge, that's what you think. Oh, not at all, kid. Well, you got it wrong. Sure, we know you shoot most of Don's stuff for him. Only he gets all the credit. Ain't that right, kid? Ah, uh, don't let it get you down. Say, why don't you guys go out and set fire to the old lady's home? It might be more fun. Hi, boy. Here you are, Winkler. And a little red apple for Amos. When are you two gonna get together? Hello, Don. Hi, fellas. Hi, fellas. How's Globe News Reel? Always the eyes of the universe. Getting an eyeful. Yeah, stick this in your eye. Come on, kid. We gotta get out and cover the Army Day show. You don't want these mugs to scoop us, do you? You're way ahead of me, bye. There you are, Bob. I'm all right. Sure you are. Come on, get outside of this. Let me along. That'd be okay with me, only I promised your dad I'd make a newsreel man out of you, and so help me, I'm gonna do it. Come on, the car's outside. I said, let me alone. You're gonna get in that car if I have to pour you into it. Set him up, Mike. What you need's a good punch in the nose, and someday you're gonna get it. If you have to get plastered, why don't you do it on your own time? And that's Stark's kid. Well, I can remember when his father was the only cameraman Union Newsreel had. And you had only one canary. Ah, but what a canary. <laughs> <laughs> and the old man is still a right guy. 
Why don't you give the kid a chance for his sake? Oh, stop by. You're breaking my heart. Come on, finish that drink. We've got a date with the Army. Company attention. Fall it. Forward. March. <laughs> <laughs> entertained you with their smoke stunning are now landing. Give them a hand, folks. Hi, competition. Hello, Big Ears. Where have you been? You get the finish of the race? Sure, honey. I'll say what. Well, cutest little monkey I ever shot. Monkey? Yeah, it's not the zoo. Got a match? What's this? Wait a minute. We don't know who it is. Neither do the officials. This seems to be an event that's not on the program. Say, isn't that who's it's plane? Nobody but. This is gonna be good. Who is it? Watch her. Her? That eight beater belongs to Wilma Howe. Hey, save your film, kid. Glenn can afford to waste his. Her old man owns the Globe Newsreel. And half the picture business, sucker. Yeah, that's a trouble with dames like her. More money than brains. If that dumb Dora doesn't care about her own neck, at least she ought to know better than to stunt over that crowd. Hey, we'll switch over to a three-inch and grab it, kid. Ten to one, she crashes. my little love. I just saw a union newsreel that had some scenes of my otter gyro at the army show. Yes. What do you think they said? Oh, probably something to the effect that pampered rich man's daughter disorganizes air meat for sake of fool hard will. Oh. Well, what did the narrator say? What you said. <laughs> oh, Daddy, I wasn't trying to show off. No. Oh, I'm so I'm bored to death. Cocktail parties, receptions, highballs, style shows, dog shows, cat shows, meow. My dear, I think you should pursue what is today an incomprehensible code of morals. I think you should marry. Marry? Hmm. Whom would I marry? Ooh. That is nice young fellows, boys breathing, money. Nice young fellows? Huh. Some donkey with a polo mallet in one hand and a highball in the other. You know what I'd like to do? What? I'd like to go to work. Do something. Be somebody. You go to work? <laughs> That's preposterous. Why should it be preposterous? Do you imagine for one moment that any young woman of your type would be anything but an infernal nuisance in any business? I certainly do. Daddy, I want to do something. Yes, and just which one of my various activities are you proposing to honor with your presence? Well, you own the Globe Newsreel Company. I've always been interested in moving pictures. Mm, I'm rather surprised you should want to go into that business after your experience this evening. Well, I don't care. I'm going to do something. You're not. I am. You are not. Am. 
Well, of course, if you'd rather just have me going on being nobody but a rich man's daughter, with you and your newsreel poking fun at it. Now, I think I can assure you that that won't happen again. You remind me to call up my lawyer in the morning. Oh, no, Dad. No competitor is going to make a laughing stock of the whole name. No, Mr. Fayle hasn't come in yet. Yes, Mr. Starr. Chicago, hold the line, please. Look what he did. Union newsreel. Mr. Stark wants to see you right away, Don. You've been trying to be cleaning. You're on a busy line. Joanne. Hi, Joe. Stark's looking for you, Don. Hi. Joe Matt's waiting for you, Phil. Better hurry. Phelan hits the tape in 10 flat. Stark wants to see you, Don. Is that so? Funny well, nobody told me. Pleasant morning, Winkler. Hello, Don. So, Pampered Heiress disorganizes army show for a thrill, eh? That's right, she did. Would it interest you to know that J. Fenton Howell's attorney just threatened us with a $100,000 libel suit? Cheapskates. Libel? Defamation of character, misrepresentation, and mental anguish. She's a pain to me, too. So it's funny, eh? Well, if her old man can't stop her from making a fool of herself, is that our fault? We're running a newsreel, not an editorial page. Yeah, I know, when a man bites a dog and so forth. Well, Wilma Hall doesn't have a dog, and she was too stingy to even give us a crack up. That film wouldn't have been worth a nickel without the angle I gave it. That's just why I threw it out in the first place. You're to blame for sneaking our story back in after I'd already okayed the reel. Be reasonable, Amos. That's the kind of stuff that put Union right at the top of the heap. A few more libel suits and we'd be right at the bottom. I had to get down on my knees to Hall to call it off. Oh, so he called it off. Then you're giving me the works over nothing at all. I suppose it's nothing to you that I have to call back every foot of film from every theater that's running it. Well, that is too bad. Well, it ran two days. A lot of people saw it. <laughs> you bet they did. <laughs> Look here, Phelan. Another stunt like that from you, and you're through. Well, I'm only trying to be a help to you, Amos. Union first, last, and always. E pluribus union, that's me. This is the last time for you. Of course, if you don't appreciate me. Just a minute, Mr. Phelan. What's the matter? Winkler, who did you say is covering a handicap this afternoon? Mr. Phelan. Correct. Mr. Phelan. Oh, have a heart, Amos. The same old stuff. They're off, they hit the tape, and Wilma Howell drops a wreath over Starling, the winner. I don't even have dreams that bad. You heard me. Well, where's the human slant? How many people in this country have got racehorses? 10,465. Get out of here. At least you won't find any babies at the track. <laughs> the time. Two more races before the handicap. We're early enough. Better pick yourself a good spot, Bob. Grab a shot of the judges' stands. Take your film for the last race. And for the love of Mike, watch your camera speech. Maybe you'd rather shoot it yourself. You're okay. Thanks. Nice. Say, if I don't see you before the handicap, I'll meet you here afterwards. Hello, cowboy. Where's your horse? Yeah, what? How would you like to get in the movies? We always did say you had talent, didn't we, Marie? Hey, what's your name? Tom Mix. Oh, well, what does Tom Mix do? Come on, Garbo, you don't want your mug in that camera. Oh, come on, son, let's go. Say, what's your fly? You're entirely welcome. Miss Billy, your father says you better come over to the clubhouse for a bite to eat before the race. Oh, thanks, Dad. Tell him I'll be right along. You'll be right over, Mr. Howell, as soon as she can tear herself away from the starter. <laughs> I never saw him look better. Uh, sure, he's as fit as a fiddle. A horse and a half, says I. Here's a ten. I got a two-dollar ticket on the favorite to come in third. What are you trying to do, win a candy bar? Well, well, where's Papa? You know all the answers. Getting done out today. He's grabbing some stuff with a hand camera. 
Oh, he's making pretty little pictures of a month-old colt being fed from a baby's bottle. Isn't that too, too sweet? <laughs> you looking for somebody? Oh, so it's you, huh? Sure, and if it isn't McCloskey, well, I haven't seen you since the Kentucky Derby. Remember, you trained the wrong horse. Well, how are you, anyway? I was fine up until this minute. How'd you get here? Say, Mr. Hal and I are the best of pals. You'll find him pining away for you over at the clubhouse. Come on now, pal. Take that camera and get out of here. Oh, be human, Mac. That last picture I took of you didn't do you justice. Now, if you give me a nice, real pose with Starlin. Are you going to leave quietly, or are you going to be thrown out? What's the matter, Dad? That's ah, one of them fresh news reel guys. And from that union outfit. Really? Public enemy one to ten, inclusive. You're Mr. Phelan's the name, Miss McCloskey. Uh, just a minute. That's all right, Dad. Oh. Well, it won't be if Mr. Howell finds out he's here. I just want to get a good shot of Starling. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Phelan. Tell me, did you photograph the army show the other day? Yeah, I helped cover it. Why'd you like it? Oh, I thought it was lovely. Congratulations. Thanks. Especially the part about Miss Wilma Howell. That thing? Say, she's not a friend of yours, is she? Well, in a sort of a way. Well, that's the first nice thing I've ever heard about that day. Really? I suppose I've got a shooter today draping the old familiar wreath around Starling's neck. Say, you must hate her. Oh, she's not important enough to hate. She's just one of those girls that takes advantage of the fact that her old man's got enough money to square any squad. It's not her fault her father's well off. Well off? With a crackpot like her in the family, she's a liability. Say, do most people think the same way you do about Wilma Howell? Sure, but all oh, that talk about human beings. What about you? Country girl. No. All my life. But you've been around. That's a lot of country. Well, tell Grandpa all about it. I thought you came to the races to get some pictures. I did, and let's go. Oh, Dad said no. Oh, well, you don't want to disappoint Starling's public, do you? Of course not. Well. Oh, Starling, easy, boy. I suppose you put your last nickel on, Starling. That was no nickel, boss. That was two bucks. Well, you ought to clean up. I'm already clean. Here's another steak for you. Only this time, don't gamble. No, Mom. I'll bet on Starling. He should have win if the jockey calves my rabbit foot. There you are. Loyalty of groom wins for Starling. Rabbit's foot brings home handicap winner. That's the stuff that makes newsreels. Go on now, hold it there, son. Thanks. Thanks, Miss McCloskey. Oh, you, you must go now, please. If Dad found you here, he'd blame me, and Mr. Howard blame him. Uh-huh, and far, far into the night. Well, when am I going to see you again? I don't know. After the big race? Oh, you'll be busy photographing Miss Howell. Oh, the kid that's with me can take care of her. Uh, I'm sure she'd be flattered to hear that. After the big race? No. Good, I'll be seeing you. Darling, I'm so glad you ain't old female. All clear. No one in there but the groom. Hey, wait a minute. You can't run in and out of this stable. It's all right, buddy. I forgot to pick up a couple of shots. No, you don't. You're not going in there. Now beat it. Well, you wouldn't try to stop me, would you, mister? On your way before I call the ground police. Go ahead and call them. Come on out of there. You're not... <clears throat> oh.
hurry up. this film in the test box. Got to get it through the suit before the race is over. I got a ticket on every horse in the race except one. I see you. Right. Here they come to the track. Starling carries top weight, but from the looks of him out there, that won't be a handicap to a champion that's already one of the top money winners of all time. There's Black Forest with Campbell. Pilgrim with Grayson. They're all rivals, he and Starling. And at the post. Hurry up, folks, and place your bets. Pilgrim draws number one position. Starling next. There's Black Forest trying to jump the barrier. They're ready to go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Saturday's broken out. But it doesn't bother Starling. He's cool as a... They're out. Here comes Starling. He's setting the pace. It's Starling by two lengths. Black Forest second. Saturday third. It's Starling by three lengths. That champion if there ever was one. Pilgrim coming up on the outside. Harper's out. Black Forest giving everything he's got, but he can't overcome the lead of that grip horse Starling. It's Starling by four lengths. What a horse he is. Black Forest second, and Saturday trying to carry him. Pilgrim third, but the right at his heel. Now they're turning into back stretch. Starting ahead by fourth and going like a champion. He's a horse and a half, folks. They'll never catch him. Black Forest second. Saturday right behind him. Pilgrim fourth. Crown lady fifth. Starling ahead by three lengths, but he can't hold it. Black Forest is gaining on him. It's Saturday third. Pilgrim fourth. He's making his bid, but it's not enough. Starling by two lengths. He's tired. Black Forest is pulling up. He's catching him. Then they're going to the far turn. It's Starling by a lake. Black Forest second. Coming strong. Now they're coming into the stretch. Starting in front. Black Forest right behind him. They're neck and neck. Black Forest passes him. It's Black Forest in the lead. Starling's dropping back. Saturday's going to pass him. It's Black Forest by a length and a half. Saturday is passing Starling. Saturday and Pilgrim fighting for place. Starling is beaten. Saturday second and pulling away. Pilgrim third. It's Black Forest by two lengths. And Black Forest wins. Black Forest the winner. Got to get this to the judges stand before that race is declared a fake. What's this, folks? It's Starling. The trainer can't hold him. He's running away. There he goes. What's the matter with him? He acts half crazy. That's not like Starling. He's never done this before. There he comes back. Hold it until you see this. How did you get this, Phil? I picked it off a rose bush. I photographed it and Starling saw before the race. I can't understand it. The horse was in perfect condition. Starling's with. owner is wanted at the judge's stand. Will Mr. Howell please report to the judge's stand as quickly as possible? Mr. Howell. Suppose I'd better go. There's something wrong with you. Excuse me. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. We're satisfied. But have we the authority without a meeting of the stewards? In this emergency, yes. The handicap is no race. The handicap is declared no race. Everyone holding mutual tickets, report to the windows and get your money back. The handicap is declared no race. What are we going to do? We're going to get that film. Floristan handicap declared no race. <laughs> Starling dope, says newsreel cameraman. The biggest scoop a newsreel ever had and what do you do? You give it to the newspaper reporters. Then you let a couple of cheap crooks run you over to the side of the road and take the film away from you. <laughs> All you bring back is this flash out of your test box. Well, I was lucky to save that. It's enough for a conviction if we identify the crooks. I don't care a continental about that. I want that film for our newsreel. What would you do with a gun sticking in your ribs? I'd like to see the color of the crooks who could take film I shot away me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Surprised they didn't get your camera, too. Come to think of it, they did. What? Say, look, Amos, I got an idea. We'll get a couple of actors to play those crooks and we'll stage the whole thing over again. Nobody will know the difference, and you can bet the two mugs on that piece of film won't sue you for libel. Have you got the nerve to think old man Howell would loan Starling to his opposition? Well, Starling isn't the only horse outside of a glue factory. We'll use a double. Yeah, so Howell can start suing me all over again for misrepresentation. Is that a vacuum you're carrying around where your head ought to be? I tell you, we'll build it up, dramatize it, put it over on every newsreel business in the country. I've got trouble enough without nursing you through a brainstorm. Brainstorm? So that's what you call it. 
Because you're behind the times, Amos. Why yes, you? and so is your whole newsreel business. You half-baked upstart! Half of you are trying to sell you on a human angle. All a baby means to use another laundry bill. Well, the public's got a heart if you haven't. Drama, that's what they want. Here we got a chance to give it to them, and you're up to your ears and fog, you can't see it. Because you haven't got any imagination, that's why. You're like an old hen that lays the same kind of egg day after day. Get out of here! You're true! All right. But not till I tell you something I've been saving up for a long time. You smoke the rottenest cigars of anybody I know. Call for you, Don. Hello. Yes, Oh, hello, Miss McCloskey. Yes, I'll relay. Hold the line a minute, will you? I'll take in the camera room. Oh, I was talking to you in Grand Central Station. I'm afraid I don't know how to tell you what this meant to... All of us. Well, that makes us both even. Anyhow, I didn't have to shoot that howl dame draping a wreath around Starling's neck. And you'll never know how she was looking forward to that. Tonight? Mm, maybe. <laughs> All right. It's a date. Oh, no, no, don't call for me. Better let me meet you. Well, let's see. Uh... Oh, yes, that'll be all right. Well, don't dress up. We're going slumming. Okay, I'll see you later. What are you at half mass for? Well, what did Dad say? When I told him I felt the need of a vacation, he was big about it. So there you are. No more chasing fire engines or airplanes for me. No, sir. From now on, I'm going to take my hurricanes with all the comforts of a load seat. Cut it out, Don. Why didn't you tell him it was my fault we lost the film? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, get out of here. Hey, get a match. I'll be in. You knock those cups on the Golden Gate Bridge, then rush them to the San Francisco Exchange. Well, gentlemen, from headquarters, that piece of film that your men developed at the track. Oh, yes. I hope it's more good to you than it is to me. Sure. Big help to us. You have your credentials, of course? Sure. Where are they? Right here, Toots. Stay away from that phone. Quit stalling and hand it over. Get out of this office. Sure, and that film goes with us. Or else. Uh, easy. Now answer it and give the right answer. Hello? What would you do, Amos, with a gun sticking in your ribs? You're fired! Hurry it up. Keep away from that drawer. But, but. Okay, Joe. camera on this, Winkler. Two guns start, captures desperados. Boy, what a scoop. Be sure you don't give this to the reporters. <gasps> Got a match? The white satin? Oh, no, my yellow traveling suit. To the jockey club banquet? Oh, I'm not going. Oh, Miss Howell. McCloskey to you. 
John went with Clusky to the bottom of the sea, dressed in his best suit of clothes. Down went McCluskey to the bottom of the sea. The song happens to be about a gent named McGinty. McCluskey to you. See who that is, Mom. Hello? Yes, he's here. It's Mr. Stark. What does he want? He says there's a ferry boat on fire and he wants you to cover it. Tell him I'm fired. He says he's fired. What? Who fired him? Who fired you? Tell him he did. He says you fired him. Oh, what difference does that make? I'm always firing him. What of it? Mrs. Phelan, you bring that boy to the phone at once. You're not fired. That's how I quit. Oh, never mind. I'll tell him myself. Hello. Look, I'm taking a shower, but as far as I'm concerned, you're wetter than I am. I don't care if Rome burns down. You know better than to take me seriously. I've treated you like a son, given you the pick of assignments. Are you going to throw me down at a time like this? Look, I wouldn't turn another crank for you if Mrs. O'Leary's cow started the Chicago fire over again. No. That's the gratitude I get for making you the best newsreel man in the business. If you don't cover this fire for me, I'll see that you never work for anybody else as long as you live. You're fired. I can handle it on Dad. I can shoot every bit as well as Phelan. When you're as good a newsreel man as Phelan is, there'll be two moons in the sky and you can skate clear up the Panama Canal. Someday you've got to realize that I've grown up. I'm not running around in rompers. I can do my job as well as any man you've got on the stair. Get Bill Watson. You'll go with Watson. He's not going to let me work anymore, is he? He's going to blackball me. Well, I'll show him I'll work for myself. Well, Matt McGann, are you going to pace the floor all night? Oh, gosh, no. I've got to hurry. You know what day this is? Sure. This is the day I've got my first date with your future daughter-in-law. You don't mean to say you've fallen in love. Have I? Mom, I'm so goofy, we're going to the circus. <laughs> and I'd almost given up hope of ever having a grandson. <laughs> Hey, peanut, clap going here. Anyone else? Sit here for news here. Walking stick. Wait a minute. What do you have? What do you got? Peanuts, popcorn, cracker jack, souvenirs. Well, uh, I'll take a soda pop. Soda pop, too. Soda pop? Yeah. Anyone else in here? Peanuts, popcorn, cracker jack, souvenirs. Who else wants tonight's souvenirs? Take home. Say, it takes nerve to go up in the air and do stunts like that. It's more a question of knack than nerve, really. Don't tell me you're an aerial artist in disguise. Oh, I mean, I should think it would take more nerve to do what you do. Wish I had the nerve right now to ask you to. Uh, ask me to what? To ask you to uh, go out with me again some evening. <sighs> Horrible stuff. Awful. Thank goodness I'm almost through. I never knew you were a musician. Oh, yes, I play in any key. Oh, you like music. Watch. It wasn't his fault. Say. What are you thinking about? About how Starling was cheated out of that race. Yes. 
What if you showed it to people on the screen? The whole drama, how they dope Starling before the big race. Wouldn't people get a wallop out of that? Hey, that sounds pretty good. The human side of the headlines. Dramatizing the news. How's that for an angle? Oh, that, that's marvelous. Marvelous? It'll crack the newsreel business wide open. And with a Starling story for a beginner, Oh, I wish I hadn't made that Wilma Haldane sore at me. What's she got to do with it? Well, if I could persuade her to use her influence, well, oh, there's no use talking about it. I might be persuaded to use uh, my influence. You? I could get Dad. Gee, Billy, could you? I'm sure I could get the job. Swell. Hey, Peanut, popcorn, chewing them two and a half balloons are down here. Anyone else? Well, and I'll go out to the track the first thing in the morning and make all the arrangements. Well, I make old Stark crawfish. You've had a fight with you and your newsreel. Why don't you take your idea to the globe? How's that fit? Old frozen puss? He's as out of date as last year's calendar. You're absolutely right. You know Mr. Howell thinks women have no place in business? Well, that shows what a sap he is. But your father has a lot of trouble with him. They're exactly alike. What a life you must lead. I wish I could change him. Maybe I could do something about it. But I'm going to see you again. Now, look here, Mr. Phelan. If you intend to carry through this proposition, you've got a lot of work to do. Something that may mean a big future to you. Us? Partners? Partners. We as in Company Incorporated. And I'll be right there to crack the whip over you. Go on, get out. I've got to get in. You know, I've got to get my beauty sleep. I think you could do with a little. Oh, huh, you're off into that one. <laughs> I'll call you first thing in the morning. Ah, bet you forgot your glove. But I'm not an actor. Oh, you're doing splendidly, Dad. And I'm not your... You're doing splendidly. Yeah. Well, these fan mail starts rolling in. Fan mail. Go on with your blarney. Do I need some part of Mr. Phelan? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. We're in a fine fix, aren't we, like Kirkus? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Gee, Mom, I know now what it feels like to have a baby. Well, mine grew up to be the finest investment in the world. Uh-huh. There's optimism for you. Well, I hope Stark adopts this one. You can take it to Globe. Uh-huh. No orphanages. I'd rather be Stark's office boy than Howell's managing editor. Well, here's hoping. I tell you, I haven't got time to see your brainstorm. Yes? Phelan's film is ready for you to see in the projection room, Mr. Stark. Mr. Stark will be right over. Well, you asked for it. Come on, you got me into this. Cigar, Amos? No. I hope your lunch agreed with you. You'll find that out soon enough. To 40,000 people watching the Forest and Handicap that exciting afternoon, it was inconceivable. Starling, the favorite, the champion who had earned over $300,000 in prize money for Howell's stable, seemed to have run his last race. When he broke away from his trainer, acting like a crazy horse, they didn't know what had happened back in that stall before the race. But the federal government acted quickly, extending its determined drive on the narcotic evil to protect horses as well as men. 
And to the ranks of other lawbreakers come the two culprits who doped the mighty Starling, sentenced within 24 hours after their capture while they were trying to recover the evidence that convicted them. Here they are, folks, two gamblers who lost. It'll be a long time before they see another horse race. Crime does not pay. How, uh, how was your lunch, Amos? Not a bad cigar, Phil. You're, uh, you're, you're sure you're all right? Say, why the blazes didn't you do this in the first place? What? Imagination. Heart. That's what it's got. That's the stuff they want to see. We'll build it up. Four or five news stories. Dramatize them. Put out an issue every month. The March of Events. How's that, Winkley? Good. It's swell, Amos. Certainly it's swell. Why, every first-run theater in the country will have it out in lights. I've got the biggest thing that ever hit the business. You? Where do I come in? Huh? Oh, put him back on salary at a 50-buck raise. 75. 100. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Nothing's going. Hey, my look, this great big Irish heart of yours, every cent I've got in the world has sunk in this. I want to return on my investment and a percentage of the profits. What? Well, you don't think my partner would consider anything but a percentage of the profits. Have you got a partner? Well, a silent partner. Of course, if you want us to take it to the globe. A hundred. And full charge of the March of Events. How's that? And a percentage of the profits. Impossible. Amos, think of my partner. Well, then the percentage of the profits. Uh, profit can get as many contracts as anybody else. But they can't get them while the theater managers are holding off. Wait to see what this new stuff that Union promises them turns out to be. And it's up to you to find out what that is. But the whole thing doesn't make sense. A newsreel is still a newsreel. And Union can't get anything that we haven't got. Our men cover everything side by side with theirs. Isn't that so, Flynn? The only scoop they've scored on us in the last six weeks is the doping of Starling. <laughs> and then somebody stole the film from them. Yes, but the fact remains they promised the business something new. And they disorganized our sales market until a definite announcement is made. Well, Flynn? It's up to you to find out. We're on the spot. I've got a hunch. You know, I think Phelan's mixed up in this some way. How are you going to find out? Well, every chain has a weak link. No announcement yet, no. We'll play off the mystery angle. Make them wait for it. When the issue's ready, we'll smash them with them. Good luck, Amos. The globe's going crazy, eh? Good. We'll give them all something to shoot at this time. Hello, Bob. Back already? Oh, what a knockout. This test just came out of the soup. Mm. The last of the Isabel, huh? She went up like a bomb when the shell struck. I got about 300 feet of it from the bridge of the torpedo boat. What'd the other newsreels get? <laughs> Nothing that I didn't. Is that the best you can do? I want more than that. Yes, you're going to get it, Amos. There's a real story in this. That derelict's been drifting off the shipping lanes for two years. Remember when the crew abandoned her in the storm? Well, what of it? I photographed the second mate later in the hospital. We can use that same film. Build it up. Dramatize it. See if that piece of film's in the library. Survivor. That's the angle. If we can locate one of them. Right. Stage the storm of the Isabel all over again with a real member of the crew. Let's get on it, Phelan. It's just the punch we need to put over the march of events. Go out for any pickup stuff you need. Swenson? No, he ain't lived here for a year. Don't ask me, buddy. No, Swenson ever lived here. No. No record of any lost Swenson employed through this agency. Yes, yeah, Swenson docked at Pier 62 today. Is your name Swenson? Yeah, Doug, it's me. And I photographed you two years ago in the hospital after the Isabel was lost. Yeah, by Judy, I remember you. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> All right, Mr. Swenson, just imagine you're back on the deck of the Isabel and the waves are breaking over and you're shouting orders to the crew. Oh. Yeah. All right, how's that process, please? Get the overhead. Keep that line over here. Hey, spread out that 18. 
Hey, pull that mic up. You're in the picture. Well, we're ready as soon as sound is. You ready with the wind machine? In the water? Better go go that Okay, quiet, up. everybody. Okay. Take your place, Mr. Swenson. Yeah. All right, get ready, everybody. Roll up. All right, wind machine. Never to be forgotten is that night of fury aboard the Isabel, a brave handful of men who go down to the sea in ships and battle for their puny lives against the savagery of that storm. Is this the way it'll appear in the theater? Yes. Go aboard the hell! After a week of drifting on the open sea, exhausted and their water supply gone, a small boatload of survivors was picked up by a tramp schooner. And here, recovering from his grim experience, is Lars Swenson. Maybe he's planning to sail his ships and bathtubs after this. How do you feel, Mr. Swenson? I feel glad I was alive today. The last we see of the Isabel, those waves swept clear over her. By Yimini, I sure was glad to be alive. Events march on. After the Isabel is believed to have sunk, it is reported still afloat. The Navy Department holds an inquiry. Gentlemen, this derelict is a greater menace to navigation than we realize. In what way, sir? The Isabel is a floating mine. To rid the seas of this threat to navigation, the Navy unites in a search for the phantom schooner. For it is revealed that on her painful voyage, the Isabel was smuggling a contraband cargo of high explosives. It is finally discovered by the eyes of the Navy. Isabel located. Isabel located. Longitude 60, latitude 30. Isabel sighted. Longitude 60, latitude 30. Fire to low. Low. Rain. Check. Rain. 2,500. Deflection 2-4. Commence firing. And so again, the Navy protects the seas for the commerce of all nations. First in war and first in peace. The events of the world march on. That's a great finish, Don. Congratulations. <laughs> and a percentage of the profits. Stark, Mr. Stark, it's plastered all over the trade papers. Why, they've even lifted our own headlines, the truth about the forest and handicap, and the inside story of the Isabel. But the entire staff was sworn to secrecy. Where could this leak have come from? Oh, what difference does that make now? They beat us to the punch. The release will be in all the exchanges today. By tomorrow, we'll be playing every key run in the country. Before we can get out a new reel, Global will have sewed up half our contract. Where are you going? To find out where that leak came from. Unusual privilege having you visit us. May I show you around? No, thank you. Uh, will you sit down? Mr. Taylor, how did this happen? Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. The Union News really has been working for weeks on this very idea. But how did you know? Because I worked on it. Yes, with Don Phelan. It was his idea, the march of events. Your father knew this? Not from me. But, Miss Howell, a uh, rival newsreel firm. Why not? Dad wouldn't let me go to work here. He wouldn't give me the chance to. To be useful to anyone, to do anything that mattered. Oh, hello, Phelan. Of course, you know Miss Howell. How? Oh, Don, I meant to tell you. Only that would have spoiled your fun, Miss McCloskey. Don! I was a little slow getting it, wasn't I? Always having to meet you on street corners, never being able to call you on the telephone. Oh, you must listen to me. And I thought Wilma Howe was harebrained. Well, I take it back. You were smart enough to put it over on me. Well, Don, you don't think... What a lot of laughs you two must have had together. Look here, Fairman. Well, have a good laugh now. You've certainly got the last one. 
Pardon the intrusion. Favor. Miss Howell, if we'd only known. It doesn't matter. But uh, he can't blame you. Why should I care? Has something happened? Tell my father that I've gone out of town for the weekend. Tell him that I'm going to... Well, no, just tell him that I'm gone out of town. Yeah, that's her. That's the dame that took our entire proposition and laid it right in Taylor's lap. Are you sure, Don? Billy's a swell gal. She wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, uh, she did it all right. Sure, you're wrong. Didn't I just leave the two of them together? Oh, here's good luck to her. <laughs> and I was wondering if she was married. Funny, isn't it? What a laugh. Wise guy, that's me. Wise guy. You know, he's trying to drown a thirst that's learned to swim. Boy, when he falls off the wagon, splash. <laughs> father, dear father, come home to me now. The clock in the steeple strikes one. <laughs> it's a gift. Yeah. Hello? Just a minute. It's for you, Dom. It's the office. Uh, tell him I'm not here. Hello. Yes, Dad. No, he's not here. What? Yes. Kidnapped the warden and they're headed this way. Find Phelan. All right. You think you're a cameraman. Here's your chance to prove it. Go to it, son. Up yet. Nothing. Don, let's go. It's the biggest story that ever broke. It's all right, kid. You cover it. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Prison break. Bet you there's a woman at the bottom of it. I'm on the way. Come on, Johnson. Come on, Don. All right, it's your chance, kid. Go on. Tom Salem, how long are you going to let young Stark make a fool out of you? Huh? Him. He's the one that tipped off your little proposition to Globe. Victoria, my love, you're drunk. Didn't I see Flynn feed him more booze than he could hold just to make him blab? Uh, Bob wouldn't sell out his old man to the opposition. Oh, I don't think the poor kid knew what he was doing. But he was so drunk that Flynn just opened his head and picked out everything that was in it. Fine. Give me that telephone book. All of which, all of which. Why, get me a taxi cab. How? Hello? No, Miss Howell is not here. She's gone out of town. Your taxi's waiting. Oh, I'll let him wait. Give me another drink. Say, you know, Flynn and the rest of those boys are going to scoop the ears off of that kid. Mm -hmm. Well, it serves his father right for having that kind of a son. Well, it's not Amos's fault. Well, what do you care? But I'd like to see the expression on his face when he realizes that the other newsreels have beat him to it. Just because you let him down. Oh. Where's that taxi cab? Calling all cars, calling all cars, prison break, vicinity Rochester Road, King's Highway blockaded, convicts holding warden prisoner, driving black touring car, warning all cars, general alarm, prison break, watch all highways, three escape cars. Maybe they didn't. 
didn't see us. Oh, horseradish. Take me back alive. I will shoot it out. Look! Get behind the car. Come on, get out. Step it up, Warden. That's a fast young lady. We need you and your car. You can't do this. Move over. Get in there, Warden. Get the other car. Okay. You'll get it too, sister. All right, get his coat off. Where are the keys to that rumble seat? In the ignition lock. Here, you two guys get in there. If you two out of the way, I think I can bust this thing through. But what if you don't? Then you're caught like rats in a trap. Sister, you're going to drive this car and I'm going to be the warden. Open your trap once and you'll be sorry. The fact that you're a dame don't mean a thing to me. And then what? As soon as we're outside these police lines, we'll dump you off and you can be on your way. Shap. Get behind that wheel and watch your step. Apologize to that dame, but you might say a few kind words to her boyfriend. Come on, move over. Nothing doing. I'm a married man and I've got a family. But I gotta catch that girl. Brother, you go and catch her, but not in this taxi. Get out of here. <laughs> Billy's in that car. Don't I know it? I've been chasing her three miles to apologize. Apologize? You know the escaped convicts are in that car? What? Yeah. Step on it. What happened to you? I thought the crooker was holding Billy. Kid, I'm beginning to like you.
like that are going to give this county a black eye. Oh, tiddlywinks. They're going to get me mad yet. Oh, razzle dazzle. Billy, thanks. Not at all. Phelan's the name, Miss McClasky. There you are. The police don't even have any respect for the law. Oh, well, it's nearly dinner time anyway. Better pick up the gun before this man wakes up. Take him away. Okay, Warden. How did this happen? There's a little surprise for you. In the rumble seat. Open up the rumble seat. Yes. Come on out of there. that stuff in their town and through the lab. We'll want special scenes in all the leading theaters right. tonight. What's happened? Well, the escaped convicts were captured through the efforts of Miss Wilma Howe, daughter of Jay Fenton Howe, president of the Globe Newsreel Company. And they're on their way back to jail. The entire capture was photographed by the Union Newsreel Company, who will exhibit scenes of the capture in all leading theaters this evening. Would you care to shoot yourself? No, old man Howe will take care of that. Come on, John. As a token of your willingness to assume these solemn obligations, you will now join right hand while I propose to you the marriage covenant. Do you, Wilma, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? And do you promise to be to him a faithful and affectionate wife? I do. Take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. 